What if Texas A&M bookends their season with home wins against Notre Dame and Texas? That's not promising anything else. That's just what if Mike Elko's first game as head coach at A&M is a win over Notre Dame. Notre Dame will be a consensus top 10 team, I'd imagine. They are a bona fide playoff contender. They'll be on the fringes of championship contention conversation. So what if you do that? That's part one. It's one massive domino. That just means there's just a ton of momentum. There's juice. Like everyone's jacked. Billy Lucci is the most booked guest on shows coast to coast. But then what if you get to the end of the year? And who knows what they've done. Maybe they're a playoff contender themselves. But what if they get to the end of the year and then Texas comes to College Station and then they beat them as well? That's one of those deals where you could, you could go eight and nine. You could go eight and four. I don't know how you'd win eight games with those two being wins. You'd probably win more than that. But even if you won eight or nine games and you didn't go to the playoff, you didn't go to the SEC championship game. Dude, in year one of Mike Elko there, when these are the games you fell short in, too often under Jimbo Fisher, if you got that done in year one, then it would mean, well, it would mean you got the right guy. And I don't think they're doubting it. But honestly, guys, I don't think a lot of folks who even watch this sport carefully and watch this sport a lot understand anything about Mike Elko. I don't think they know a thing about him. I think they think of Elko as that dude who's been a high profile assistant at Notre Dame and A&M. And then they kind of snap their fingers and they, well, where was he? Where was he? He was at Duke. Was, was that what? Yeah, Duke. And then you nod your head and they say, oh, didn't they beat Clemson or something like that? That's basically the public um, recall on Mike Elko. Mike Elko, I've said this a few times, I'll say it a few more, and then we'll get to the season. I don't have to say it anymore. Mike Elko is a known commodity amongst football people. No, no one in the football space doubts him. No one in College Station doubts him, but hey, everyone hires a coach and then believes in him. So that alone is not proof he's going to do anything. Think about what they lacked there. They never lacked resource. I've, I've been a big believer that they've got the resources to be a premier program. They've made bad hire after bad hire. So I think they made the right hire here. They hired a guy, though, that had to get it done without all that at Duke. Development was key. Evaluation before that was key. Organizational structure was key. And when you can take all that, you know how much we love the grab claw machine. You can take all that and you take it from Duke, respectfully, to College Station, then the world is full of things that are possible all of a sudden that really didn't feel like they were possible at Duke. So if you beat Notre Dame in Texas, you're probably a contender for a lot more than just good spirits. But if you're capable of nothing more than doing that, and elsewhere you falter, think about how that sells. And then there's this other dynamic. Uh, there's this PTSD that a lot of Aggie fans have in the back of their mind about the, the history they've had being in the same conference as Texas. And I've had nothing to do with it because I've never lived out there. I've never lived here. I've never been a part of it, which makes me perfectly qualified to speak on it. I keep on trying to tell people, yeah, the Southwest Conference was what it was, and you took a back seat to them. Yes, the Big 12 was what it was, and you took a back seat to them. There, was, there were literally strings that Texas could pull that A&M couldn't pull. If you get run over by Texas in this conference, it's because you weren't good enough. It will not be because of the structure of the conference and the environment of the conference was such that Texas got a front row seat and you got put like in the third row back here. That's not the way that's going to work here. If you beat them in year one, as they're primed as a playoff contender and you got a brand new coach and they come in your building and you play them for the first time in over a decade, if you beat them in year one, huge story there. I would venture a step further and say it's one of the bigger, maybe one of the biggest stories in college football this year because that's also one of those rivalries that since it's so far away still and we've gone a generation, which we define as a decade, we've gone a generation without you guys seeing that, you may have forgotten what Texas versus Texas A&M is about. Look it up, kids. YouTube it if you have to. Look it up.